Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be God's kingdom now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to God's people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High. Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit. In the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, the fountain of all wisdom, you know our necessities before we ask, and our ignorance in asking. Have compassion on our weakness, and mercifully give us those things which for our worthiness we dare not, and for our blindness we cannot ask. Through the worthiness of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. This morning is from Genesis. Jacob left Bathsheba and went toward Haran. He came to a certain place and stayed there for the night because the sun had set. Taking one of the stones of the place, he put it under his head and lay down in that place. He dreamed that there was a ladder set up on the earth, the top of it reaching to heaven. And the angels of God were ascending and descending on it. The Lord stood beside him and said, I am the Lord, the God of Abraham your father, and the God of Isaac. The land on which you lie I will give you and to your offspring. And your offspring shall be like the dust of the earth, and you shall spread abroad to the west and to the east and to the north and to the south. And all the families of the earth shall be blessed in, in you and your offspring. Know that I am with you and will keep you wherever you go and will bring you back to this land. For I will not leave you until I have done what I promised you. Then Jacob woke from his sleep and said, Surely the Lord is in this place, and I did not know it. And he was afraid and said, How awesome is this place. This is none other than the house of God, and this is the gate of heaven. So Jacob rose early in the morning, and he took the stone that he put under his head, and set it up for a pillar, and poured oil on the top of it. He called that place Bethel. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. Our psalm this morning is Psalm 139. Lord, you have searched me out and known me. You know my sitting down and my rising up. You discern my thoughts from afar. You trace my journeys and my resting places and are acquainted with all my ways. Indeed, there is not a word on my lips, but you, O Lord, know it altogether. You press upon me behind and before and lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is so high that I cannot attain to it. Where can I go then from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I climb up to heaven, you are there. If I make the grave my bed, you are there also. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there your hand will lead me, and your right hand hold me fast. 
If I say, surely the darkness will cover me, and the light around me turn into night. Darkness is not dark to you. Dark is as bright as the day. Darkness and light to you are both alike. Search me out, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my restless thoughts. Look well whether there be any wickedness in me, and lead me in the way that is everlasting. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Our second reading is from Romans. So then, brothers and sisters, we are debtors, not to the flesh, to live accordingly to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received a spirit of adoption. When we cry, Abba, Father, it is that very Spirit bearing witness to our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. If in fact we suffer with him, so that we may be glorified in him. I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory about to be revealed to us. For the creation waits with eager longing for the revealing of the children of God. For the creation was subjected to futility, not of its own will, but by the will of the one who subjected it, in hope that the creation itself will be set free from its bondage to decay and will obtain the freedom of the glory from the children of God. We know that the whole creation has been groaning in labor pains until now, and not only the creation, but ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, groan inwardly while we await our adoption, the redemption of our bodies. For in hope we are saved. Now hope is seen is not hope, for who hopes for what is seen? But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it with patience. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Another parable Jesus put before the crowds. The kingdom of heaven may be compared to someone who sowed good seed in his field. But while everybody was asleep, an enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat, and then went away. So when the plants came up and bore grain, then the weeds appeared as well. And the slaves of the householder came and said to him, Master, did you not sow good seed in your field? Where then did these weeds come from? He answered, An enemy has done this. The slaves said to him, Then do you want us to go and gather them? But he replied, No, for in gathering the weeds, you would uproot the wheat along with them. Let both of them grow together until the harvest, at harvest time I will tell the reapers, collect the weeds first, and bind them in bundles to be burned, but gather the wheat into my barn. Then he left the crowd and went into the house, and his disciples approached him, saying, Explain to us the parable of the weeds and of the field. He answered, The one who sows the good seed is the son of man. The field is the world, and the good seed are the children of the kingdom. The weeds are the children of the evil one, and the enemy who sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age, and the reapers are the angels. Just as the weeds are collected and burned up with fire, so will it be at the end of the age. The Son of Man will send his angels, they will collect out of his kingdom all causes of sin and all evildoers. They will throw them into the furnace of fire, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. And the righteous will shine like the sun in the right kingdom of the Father. Let anyone who 
hears, listen. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord God. I speak in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Romans says, But if we hope what we do not see, we wait for it with patience. I've lost count of the number of commercials I've seen that have started with in these uncertain times. So I hesitate to begin my sermon that way. But in these uncertain and ambiguous times, we're kind of not left with other options but to hope what we do not see. I haven't been much of a garden person. That wasn't until this year. This year I went all in on the whole gardening thing. And being a beginning gardener, I sowed the seeds with wild abandon. And then I waited for what I could not see. It gave me hope to see things pop up out of the ground, especially in these uncertain times. But the thing is, with gardens, especially in Oregon, comes weeds. And I couldn't tell the difference, so I simply let them grow. I figured I could sort it out later. And to make things even more of an adventure, the labels all washed off the pots. So some things I wasn't even sure what I was looking for to pop up. As I said, begin a garden. But I don't know, there was just something about planting my garden back in March when we thought we'd only be closed down for two weeks that gave me hope in the unprecedented times in my life. Checking daily for signs of life, I hadn't even seen things closed down that long before a blizzard back east. I don't even have any relatives who've been through anything like this to ask, which is my other backup solution when I run into new adulting obstacles. And yet, despite all that's happened, despite the continued uncertainty and ambiguity, despite the continued uncertainty and ambiguity, I can still say with confidence, sure that God is in this place, even though I didn't know it like Jacob did, and he too was a wanderer. Jacob left everything behind to get away from his brother Esau. I guess it may be seeing that times of certain uncertainty and ambiguity are not new that gives me hope. They've been cropping up in people's lives for thousands of years. That connects me to the greater arc of the human story. And so, in these uncertain and ambiguous times, we wander, yes. We wait anxiously. Despair tries to overpower hope. It can feel like not only is this our new normal, but that it will last for years to come. It is in times like these that we can look to the story of the wheat and the weeds for hope. Yes, there are weeds. There are things that are not desired. Things that are changing the dreams, expectations, and outcomes we had in mind for 2020. But it's not for the servants to try and separate out, it's for the harvesters to do. What I hear in this is that we are called not to mourn what might have been, but to harvest what still can be. By that I mean that not all is lost. No, we cannot gather in person, but we can gather in other ways. We still grow as people of faith, still grow as a community. Still bring about the kingdom of God through love of God, self, and others. When it feels like everything is a loss, when it feels like we might as well write off this year, wake me up when it's 2021, we must remember that just because something's not what we hoped for, because something's not what we imagined or expected, doesn't mean that God is not present. God is surely in this place. This I know. I have been asked by a number of friends how I can have hope in a time like this, in time of uncertainty and ambiguity. And I guess for me, it's knowing that God knows us better than we know ourselves, and knowing that God is in this place, and knowing that something new is being born out of this, which may not have a lot in common with the old, but that God will still be in it. I cannot claim to know how. I cannot claim to be unwavering. I am not. But 
I'm willing to go all in on God being in, the, in this with us. I would dare to claim that God has not abandoned us in our times of need, times of ambiguity and uncertainty and loss. I will dare to claim that God is our refuge in times like this. I will dare to claim that we as children, as heirs of God, are rescued. It is not our job to do the separating. It is up to God. It is not up to us to have a clear answer of the origin of evil, rather to know that it can disguise itself as good. Goodness and evil can be entangled like those weeds in that wheat. That doesn't mean that we're excused, class dismissed. Nothing to do about it. Instead, we are called to look deep into our own hearts, into our own motives, to our own choices, and see where things are all tangled up, see where evil is disguised as good, see where we might need to do some weeding with God's help. It's as if our heart is a garden that needs tending. We need to care for it, or the weeds will quickly become overgrown. Things can get out of hand when we try when we're not in conversation with our hearts. So this week I urge you to try to take a few minutes to meditate on God's presence in this place, on a hope that is unseen, and tend your heart as if it were a precious garden. Amen. Continue with the Nicene Creed on page 358 of the Book of Common Prayer. We believe in one God, the Father of the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate in the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead the life of the world to come. Amen. Our prayers are Form 3 and on page 387. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. Grant that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you. That your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons. That they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. That there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. That our words may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. That they may be delivered from their distress. Give to the departed eternal rest. That light perpetual will shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. O Lord our God, accept the fervent prayers of your people, in the multitude of your mercies, look with compassion upon us, and all who turn to you for help. 
You are gracious, O lover of souls, and to you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. We continue with the confession of sin on page 360. Let us confess our sin against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you, thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole hearts. We have not loved our neighbor as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Give you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Continue with the Lord's Prayer on page 364, Book of Common Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The peace of God that passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God of his Son, Jesus Christ. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah.